Methionine restriction extends lifespan. So let's have a look at that data. First, in male mice, we're looking at survival plotted on the y-axis against lifespan or age in days on the x. And then there were two groups, controls, which were fed a diet of 0.43% methionine, and then methionine restricted, uh, which were fed a diet of 0.15% methionine, so a 65% reduction for dietary methionine intake in the restricted group. And then when looking at median survival or 50% survival, this is the time when half the colony has died and half is still alive. And also maximum survival this or 10% survival, this is the time when 90% of the colony had died and only 10% was still alive. We can see significant increases for both median and maximal survival in male mice. Similarly, uh, in female mice, when looking at the same diets, 0.43% methionine for the controls, 0.15% methionine for the restricted group, when looking at median and maximum survival, we can again see significant increases in female mice for both median and maximal survival in the methionine restricted group. So then one of the questions to address is how can methionine restriction extend lifespan? So first, is methionine restriction a form of calorie restriction? Are the restricted animals just eating less calories or less food, less calories, and correspondingly calorie restricted, and then that's extending lifespan? So let's investigate that. So first, let's have a look at body weight and notice that days goes up to 60, and this was a 60-day study in eight-week-old male mice. And then we've got three methionine groups, low methionine, 0.17%, normal methionine, which was defined in this study as 0.86%, and then a high methionine group, uh, which was 2.58%. And this study and all the studies referenced in this video will be in the video's description. So if you're interested in those studies, check it out. Then what we can see is that for both the normal and the high methionine groups, when, uh, when compared with those two groups, we can see that the low methionine group, 0.17%, had a significantly reduced body weight when compared with the higher methionine intake groups. So that then raises the question, was food intake reduced on the methionine restricted diet? And that's what we can see here, food intake in grams eaten per day per mouse. And then we've got the three different groups, low, normal, and high, LM, NM, and HM, plotted on the x-axis. And what we can see is that the low methionine group actually ate more food per mouse when compared with the higher methionine intake groups. So food intake is significantly increased in methionine restricted mice. And with that, we can see that methionine restricted mice are not calorie restricted. So then what might explain the extended lifespan in methionine restricted mice? So first, fecal and plasma short chain fatty acids or SCFAs are increased on a methionine restricted diet. So what are these short chain fatty acids? In terms of concentration, the most abundant short chain fatty acids are acetate, propionate, and butyrate as shown there. And as I've presented in an earlier video, they're increased by a high soluble fiber diet or exercise training. And if you missed that video, I'll link to it in the right corner. So what about data in methionine restricted mice? So first we've got fecal levels of short chain fatty acids plotted on the Y axis. And then we've got levels of each of these three short chain fatty acids, acetate, propionate, and butyrate on the X. And what we can see is that the low methionine intake group or the methionine restricted mice had significantly higher uh, fecal levels of not only acetate, but also propionate and butyrate were compared with the higher intakes of methionine in the other groups. What about short chain fatty acid levels in blood on a methionine restricted diet? And that's what we can see here, plasma levels of short chain fatty acids, and we see similar data. Higher levels of, significantly higher levels of acetate, propionate, and butyrate in mice on a, on a uh, methionine restricted diet when compared with the higher methionine intake groups. So now we can add to the list that fecal and plasma levels of short chain fatty acids aren't just increased as a result of a high soluble fiber diet or exercise training, but also as a result of methionine restriction. So how are short chain fatty acids related to lifespan extension? So for that, let's take a look at the ACARBOS, ACARBOS study uh, or ACARBOS data. And there we can see that ACARBOS extends lifespan. So here we're looking at pool data from genetically heterogeneous mice. Uh, and this is data from three different study sites that I mentioned was pooled. And those three study sites were the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio, uh, the University of Mission, and the Jackson Laboratory. So we're looking at median and maximum survival for both males on the left and females on the right. We can see significantly increased median and maximal lifespan for both males and females that were supplemented with a carbose. So what does that have to do with short chain fatty acids? Well, fecal levels of short-chain fatty acids are increased in a carbo-supplemented mice, and we can see that here. 
So uh, at the top, we've got levels of the short-chain fatty acids, acetate, butyr uh, butyrate, and propionate. And at the far right, we've got total levels of these short-chain fatty acids. And then uh, it's broken down to each of the three study sites. So from left to right, TJL is the Jackson Lab, U of M is University of Michigan, and UT is uh, University of Texas. And what we can see is that fecal levels of acetate and butyrate were higher in acarbose treated mice at the University of Texas. Fecal levels of propionate were higher in acarbose treated mice at all three study sites. And then total levels of short-chain fatty acids were higher, significantly higher in the acarbose supplemented mice at the University of Texas. So when considering that uh, short-chain fatty acids may be contributing or may be a part of the uh, longevity story in acarbose treated mice, collectively these data suggest the potential role for short-chain fatty acids on longevity in methionine-restricted mice too. Now, short-chain fatty acids aren't the only pathway that may impact lifespan in methionine-restricted mice. And methionine restriction also increases FGF21, which extends lifespan. And we can see that here. So before going into this story, note that I've covered FGF21's impact on health in an earlier video. And if you missed that, it'll be in the right corner. So now on to the data. So in this study, there were two groups, TG, which stands for transgenic, and more specifically, these were FGF21 transgenic mice, so mice that were genetically engineered to have higher levels, higher systemic levels of FGF21 for the duration of their lifespan. And this is pooled data looking at both males and females. So when looking at median and maximum survival, in this study, maximum survival is defined as 5% survival, so 95% of the colony had died and only 5% was still alive we can see significant increases for both median and maximum survival in the FGF21 overexpressing mice when compared with my mice that had normal levels of FGF21. Now, in terms of plasma levels of FGF21, regardless of if, the, if this was measured in the fed or fasting state, FGF21 mice, uh, overexpressing mice, had five to tenfold higher levels of circulating FGF21 when compared with mice that had normal levels of FGF21. So what are FGF21 levels in methionine-restricted mice? Uh, so they're increased in methionine-restricted mice, which is what we can see here. So on the y-axis, we've got FGF levels in plasma, and then we've got our three groups, low, normal, and high methionine intakes. And we can see significantly increased FGF21 in plasma in the low methionine group. So about a two-fold, at least a two-fold increase for plasma FGF21 in the low methionine intake group relative to the higher methionine intake groups. So with that in mind, what's my data? And more specifically, what's the percentage of methionine in my diet? So for that, uh, let's venture over to Patreon where I've just added a specific tier that will include extra data from YouTube videos. So if you're interested in that, check it out. And before you go, we've got a bunch of discount links and merch that I'm gonna show you in a second. First, for the discount links, uh, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee, and all of those links will be in the video's description. And now our channel also has merch, so if you're interested in that, that link will also be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.